Hey everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today and I'm so super excited to share with you the latest collaboration between Hero Arts and Lawn Fawn. I love when two of my very favorite companies come together to create an amazing stamp set. So this set is called Big Thanks. It comes with these cute little rhinos, some birds, accessories, and lots of fabulous greetings that you can mix and match. And I'm gonna be creating this one layer background to just share how easy it is to create a one layer background to really focus in on these cute critters. I have die cut this circle using a Lawn Fawn Circle die. This is a Circle Stackables die. And here's the card that I created. And I actually did this um, with friends at a craft retreat. And so I've recreated it here for you today just to share with you all of the techniques for that background. I'm going to take post-it tape and kind of just tape off that bottom landscape area and then I've got this masking paper that I've die cut with the circle die and I'm going to start with the negative first. So I'm going to actually ink up the sun in the background and you can see in the finished card that it's not a bright prominent sun but it's going to be here for just a minute. I'm using Fossilized Amber Distress Oxide ink to ink that up. And I'm using a pretty heavy hand. I'm using blending brushes, blending this all on some heavyweight Nina white cardstock. So because I'm using Nina and it can tend to not maybe blend as nice as some coated cardstocks and things like that, I like to kind of use a heavier hand or a lighter hand depending on what I'm doing. I'm going to remove that negative mask and now I'm going to use the positive mask. It's really important to keep both. And we are going to mask off the sun and add the sky. And I purposely did a really different technique than what I normally do. And that is kind of a messy bringing in colors across that horizon, across the sky, more like you would see. I really wanted kind of more of a savanna type of effect. So I'm kind of creating these messy stripes and it really looks awful when you start. Don't be discouraged, keep at it. So now I'm going to go in with Mermaid Lagoon and Blueprint Sketch and pull in these awesome stripes of color to build this really bright and fun sky. Now I obviously went with bright colors I'm using Lawn Fawn. For me, that's always bright and fun. And so I'm just now adding that layer of blueprint sketch. And again, it doesn't look fantastic until you do a little extra blending. So I kind of get the color all down and then I blend it out. Now this is really important. Blend these first. We are going to remove our mask and we're gonna blend that sun as well. Kind of pulling some of the color in front of it almost like a hazy sun, like there's clouds in front of it and things like that. So I'm kind of taking my blue or my ink blending brush with blue ink on it and not really inking that back up, but pulling the color across the sun. And look how awesome that looks. It's amazing to me how just a little bit of inking creates this really beautiful background. Next, I'm going to move my post-it tape up and we are going to ink the ground. So for the ground I'm starting with a layer of fossilized amber distress oxide ink. For this card, the important parts of creating this card, the critters are definitely the super cute element of this design, but the background is what ties it all together. So for me creating a really important or, or a really beautiful rather background was what was important to making this whole this scene whole. And so I added the fossilized amber and I noticed that I was picking up some blue ink from my glass mat, my Tim Holtz glass surface I use. And so I wiped that away really quickly so that I would quit getting blue into my ground. And then I'm gonna take gathered twigs and blend that into the fossilized amber. I really love how these two colors work together. After I've got my gathered twigs, I'm going to go back with fossilized amber and blend the rest of that part of the panel in. And this is what creates our background. Now, Distress Oxide ink has pigment in it. It's going to stay wet for a little bit. So what I like to do is you could hit it with a heat tool if you're in a hurry, but we're going to be stamping and embossing on this. So instead of hitting it with a heat tool, 
I simply set it aside to air dry while I stamp and color the images for our scene. So next I've got a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock and we are going to be stamping lots of cute, cute images from this Big Thanks stamp set. I absolutely love that Hero Arts has joined forces with some of the other wonderful manufacturers out there and are creating these amazing collaboration stamp sets. This is a fantastic addition to your Lawn Fawn collection. It's going to work so well with other stamp sets you probably already own. And even better, um, this is available on Hero Arts right now, but starting October 8th, you're going to be able to get this from some of your other favorite online manufacturers. So um, just super exciting. There are coordinating dies, which always makes me happy. I am stamping these with my favorite ink on three, Fade Out No Line Coloring Ink, so I can do a little no line coloring with these little sweeties. I did stamp multiples of the large rock and the grass. And we're going to be coloring multiples of that. I like multiples of little things like um, landscape type things like this because I just think it fills it in really nicely. Once I have all of those pieces, we can start coloring. I am going to speed through the coloring just a little bit. Uh, faster than what I've sped up the video so far. I don't want you to have to sit here all day. Um, and just to show you and include all of the coloring, I've sped it up, but it is a little bit quicker. I have listed the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers that I'm using across the bottom of the screen. If at any time you're wondering exactly which colors I used, you can find that information there. I am using a couple of different color combinations. I wanted uh, my rhinos not to be exact. So I wanted one to be a little darker than the other because I kind of made one a boy and one a girl. So my darker one incorporates dark gray, gray brown, and gray tint. We'll be just using gray brown and gray tint for the female rhino. And then I used pink haze for the insides of their ears and also to pinken the cheeks. I always like adding a little character to my Lawn Fawn critters because I think it adds such a cute, fun touch to their faces. And then for the horn there, I actually am using beige and light beige. And I really liked how that turned out. I think it makes it nice and prominent and really shows up beautifully. Let's go ahead and color our other image. I like to outline pretty much with my dark color and I pull a little bit of that additional color out and then I will blend further with my lighter marker, which in this case is gray tint. As the ink dries, it really kind of almost smooths a little bit. When it's wet, I think it still kind of looks like maybe it's a little splotchy, but as it dries, I think it looks fantastic. And this Bristol Smooth cardstock makes all the difference with the zigs. You can see that they blend like butter and you're getting fantastic results. Once we have them, the rhinos colored, let's go ahead and color in our sweet little birds. I added pale yellow for the bellies, bright yellow for the beaks, which almost is an orange color. I tend to use it a lot for orange because I really like it. It's not super dark um, and it's a fantastic orangish color. And then I'm using light blue and the blender for the birds. Once I have that blended out, I'm going to take a black pen and add in the details. So we need to add in the legs, we need to add in the eyes, and I'm also going to take this opportunity to draw in the eyes for the rhinos and add in some little eyelashes to the female. 
And then we'll move on to the rocks, which are mid brown and beige. Super, super quick coloring. Just kind of tracing those out, blending out with my lighter marker. And then we're going to do the heart, which is a nice fun pop of color. You guys, if you follow me already, you've probably heard me say this, but I love a little pop of red somewhere on my card. I almost always add a pop of red somewhere. So in this case, it's gonna be this sweet little heart underneath our stack of sentiments. And then light green and yellow green, my favorite green color combination for all the little tufts of grass. Then we're going to take the coordinating Big Thanks dies, die cut all of these components, and I use them as a guide because I don't really want to adhere them yet. I find it best and easiest, really, to stamp and emboss before you add elements to a card, if at all possible. That's so that the embossing powder doesn't try to stick to the adhesive that adheres those pieces to the background. So I'm using them as a guide, but then I'm stacking my sentiments. I really, there's a lot of space above and a lot of space below. And I thought it really needed to be filled in and the sentiments are a fantastic way to do that. So I'm stacking each of these components because you can build this in lots of different ways. I am stacking it with sending and then a very big thanks and then for all you do. And then underneath the critters, from all of us, which works really, really well together. I was so excited. I was able to build such a big sentiment and pull it not only at the top, but down to the bottom because it really kind of just balances out the whole car design. Now with the white outline from the die cuts, I felt it was important to have white represented somewhere else on the card because we have a complete inked background. There's no white border. So I am stamping with a clear embossing ink. This is the Hero Arts Embossing and Watermark ink. It works fantastic. And we're gonna use Hero Arts white fine detail embossing powder to emboss our sentiment. Now to kind of round out and finish our scene, I'm going to draw in some more kind of little grass, brown grass into the landscape. So kind of along the horizon line and then down in the ground, we're gonna use mid brown and dark brown to just draw in some little tufts of grass. We have our little green grass and the rocks and things, but I think this just rounds it out. It's one of my favorite techniques to do. And it works great because I'm not really trying to blend anything. Remember I use Nina cardstock, which isn't optimal for coloring on with zigs, but with this technique, it doesn't matter because we're not blending anything out. So I'll just draw in a few little more areas like that. And then let's grab all of our pieces here because it's time to put it all together. Now comes the magic of finishing this scene. So we've got to stamp our little phrase along the bottom. Don't forget that. And that's going to be from all of us. I will mention there are some other great sentiments. There's a small thank you. There's so very much. For being my friend, you've always got my back to you. So you could really build a lot of different phrases. You wouldn't have to use it the way I did here. I love that about these stamp sets. I love being able to mix and match so you can truly make it say, make the card say what you want it to say. Now I'm going to take a blue zig marker and we're going to color in the outline words, the big and the thanks because I think that really makes it pop and it ties into that dark blueprint sketch of the sky. And I want the big thanks to definitely be prominent. It's the biggest part of the sentiment and it's super easy to really quickly just add color in those outline lines. The embossed area holds that really well. Once we have that, we can go ahead and add our images. I'm using a combination of foam adhesive and liquid adhesive. And we wanna start with the largest pieces and kind of work our way around that. So the rhinos definitely are the focal point. They kind of 
almost frame up, if you will, the sentiment along the top of the card. And they also take up the most real estate. So we're going to adhere those with foam adhesive. And then we want to add the little red heart right underneath our sentiment, but between our two rhinos, if that makes sense. And then I've got some little rocks and grass that are going to be adhered directly to the card. We have some that are going to be popped up with foam adhesive. Just whatever will give me the best depth and dimension is what I'm going for. So a little liquid glue for the heart. I'm using a crystal katana to position that right where I want it to go. I'm also using two different sizes of foam adhesive squares. The little ones work great for the small pieces. The bigger ones work great for things like the rhinos. And we just want to group it all together to make it look like a complete seam. And I've got a small adhesive square cut in half to go behind the smaller rock. We're going to adhere one of the birds directly to the background with liquid adhesive right on top of the thanks, and then the other ones with foam adhesive, one standing on the ear of a rhino and one standing on the back. We'll adhere this to a white top fold card base, and this card using the collaboration Stamps and Dies from Hero Arts and Lawn Fawn called Big Thanks is all finished. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these super cute and fun thank you cards featuring the Hero Arts and Lawn Fawn collaboration Big Thanks Stamps and Dies. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn and Hero Arts that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel to never miss a card making or paper crafting video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.